Hello, everybody. Uh, I would like to welcome all of you to our second seminar on the CREADIAS environment and uh, some specific topics connected to it. My name is Stanisław Krzyżanowski. I'm a product manager here at Cloudfera. And today I would like to talk about uh, the very basics of uh, prototyping with uh, some of the services that are offered within the CREADIAS platform. Uh, we will be talking about uh, mainly the CREODIAS Finder and the CREODIAS Jupyter Hub. Uh, the aim of today's activity is to show you how to browse, discover, then download data. And uh, I hope that we'll manage to perform a very simple visualization of a one selected product. But uh, Let's start with a short introduction for anyone who is not familiar with uh, the concept of, uh, of a dias with uh, our platform. Uh, it's worth pointing out that uh, our today's meeting will be divided into very short presentation. I can count uh, five slides. Uh, after that, uh, we'll perform a live uh, workshop with you uh, during which I will show you how to discover uh, browse download and finally uh, do a just a bit of processing of the data so let's start with uh, the very short overview of CREADIAS what it is how it works what's what's the purpose of its existence take a look at the second slide it is a very high level depiction of uh, the DIAS infrastructure. DIAS is a sh short for Data and Information Ac Access Service. Uh, European Commission uh, with the Euro uh, European Space Agency a couple years back have decided that they need platforms for data acquisition, dissemination, and processing that would uh, lower the bar, uh, lower the entry point for any stakeholders that might be interested in taking advantage or involving their Earth observation data in the, into their processing chains. Uh, so our CREODIAS is uh, one of the platforms that was contracted by ESA uh, we have built it. Uh, its first day of its operation was about two years ago. So we are two years up and running, more than two years actually. Uh, main components of the platform are uh, Earth observ Observation Data Repository that is responsible for collecting, uh, indexing, storing, and uh, disseminating uh, the Earth Observation data. Uh, second part is the uh, so-called cloud services part. Uh, this is a <clears throat> computing cloud that allows our users to access and then process the desired data and create something new, something exciting, exciting from it. Uh, the CREODIAS environment is uh, su supplemented by a set of services uh, in, about which we will talk more later, but the aim of those services is to allow our users to visualize access, browse the data, and manage the, their own cloud uh, resources. We have talked about the data very briefly. So what types of data uh, you as our users can access? This short summary presents uh, what data products, what collections from which missions are accessible via the uh, CREADIAS platform. Uh, as you can see, uh, our main type of data are the Copernicus data. Those are coming from the Sentinel family satellites. Currently we have uh, well, four types operationals. Those are 
uh, Sentinel-1, Sentinel-2, 3, and uh, uh, Sentinel-5. P, P stands for precursor, I think. Uh, additionally, uh, we host uh, data from those are focused on the coverage of Europe. Uh, Landsat are the uh, NASA's American Earth Observation Satellites. Uh, we have Envisat uh, as well. This is a different uh, European uh, Earth Observation mission focused on uh, marine surveillance. Um, at this slide, we, I do not highlight that we have also data from the so-called Copernicus services. Those are uh, post-processed Earth observation data with some enhancement and or combined with uh, some in-situ data. So uh, Copernicus services mainly offer some derivatives of uh, the Earth observation data themselves. Today, uh, we'll be work, working on the Sentinel-2 data on the level one, called L1C, actually. Uh, but before we go on to uh, discovering those, uh, those products, I would like to describe to you what services we'll be using. Uh, we'll start with from the Creo Dias portal, which serves as a information and navigation hub for any user that uh, would like to start and work with Creo Dias. Uh, from this portal, you will see it in a minute. Uh, our users can go to any other service. Uh, then we'll use the Earth Observation Finder in order to uh, browse and dis discover uh, some products that might be interesting to us. Uh, after we determine what products we need, uh, we'll switch to the Creodias Jupyter Notebook, uh, which is, if any, anyone doesn't know what a Jupyter Notebook is, Jupyter Notebook is a interactive coding environment accessible from uh, the internet browser, ordinary internet browser. Um, our, our create our the I mean Creodias Jupyter Jupyter instances are hosted uh, within the Cloudferrous infrastructure, so they have access to the whole Earth Observation Data repository. Something that we I hope will manage to successfully show uh, in the end of this presentation. One thing to mention: uh, all the services and functionalities that we will be using from now on are accessible to anyone uh, with no fees or charges. However, our users have to uh, register themselves in order to have a Jupyter Notebook instance set up. But I do not intend to go through the registration process with you today. Uh, I think it was covered during the last webinar. So so, and it is quite self-explanatory, I would uh, I would say. But if you have any any questions or you uh, you fa you would face any obstacles, please contact us. Uh, so, this is it for the presentation. We'll come back to it later. I have one more slide for you when we we will be talking about uh, the Sentinel two data. But for now, I would like to point your attention to our Creodias portal, which I hope I will be able to show you from my screen. Please give me a minute. Uh, due to the fact that we are in a not, not a very big crowd here, uh, I would suggest that if you have any questions, please ask them uh, Anytime you, you you like, I will try to answer. I think I can make some stops. Okay. 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 I hope that you can see the Creodias portal website. Uh, this is the very starting place of our our endeavor. Uh, first thing we need to do is 
login. I have my login credentials ready, but it's it's quite easy as as I mentioned before. We have to wait and now. And now we'll go to uh, the uh, BDIAS Earth Observation Finder. Currently, you can see uh, the graphical user interface of the uh, EATA Finder. It is a quite a powerful device service that allows you to find any data you may you may require you may need in your processes this first part uh, we'll be performing now uh, we'll do it manually uh, afterwards I will show you how to how to do exactly the same thing but uh, in a more automated way that would allow you to implement it in your processes or in your algorithm or, or code uh, I was thinking a bit which part of the world we should choose and uh, I've got inspired by the fact that in November the European Space Agency will be launching its next Sentinel satellite. It will be Sentinel-6 launched from a Vanderberg Air Force, Air Force Base in California because it will be launched uh, using the Falcon 9 rocket. So. First thing we do, we type a place that we are interested in. Uh, then we have to select a date of observation. That's something I'm doing currently. Subsequently, we want to choose what kind of collection we are interested in. For the sake of this, uh, this webinar, I would like to work on the Sentinel-2 data, uh, precisely it will be Sentinel-2 level 1. Uh, as you will see in a couple of steps, uh, the, this will be the Sentinel-2 level 1 C data, which is uh, a bit more post-processed than the level 1 B. But this is the data that is available freely and openly on the CreateOS platform, so no problem here. Uh, as we have selected uh, our place we're interested in, uh, dates that we're looking for, as you can see, you're able to select between observe, observed and published. N normally, commonly, the difference, time difference between observation and, pub and uh, publishing of data is quite small, so we tend to use uh, observed, but that's it may come useful at times uh, to have this option. Uh, we're looking at one more time for Sentinel-2 data on the first processing level. Uh, we do not have any preferences as to the orbit number. So what we do now, now we just press search and fingers crossed, we will find something. It seems that we do not find anything. So, as it may happen sometimes, we do not find anything because I've made a spelling mistake. So let's try our luck one more time. Yes, we did, fi we did find five products that suit our uh, predefined requirements. Those are, are all, as you can see, Sentinel-2 L1C products. Uh, from now on, if we were to uh, be satisfied with uh, manual selection, we can select one product. We will have a product identifier highlighted here. And using this product identifier, we would be able to uh, access it uh, from the uh, EO data repository within the CREADIAS. This is very important. This is a product identifier within the CREADIAS. 
but we are not that easily satisfied. So I will show you how the uh, API works, the programmatic interface. In order to access the programmatic interface or to use access, use the programmatic interface, you have to formulate a uh, query that would uh, ask, let's say, ask the CreateIS finder about the specific data. Uh, from the CreateIS portal, you can access a uh, knowledge base in which there is a extensive uh, uh, finder API documentation that would tell you how to formulate the, those queries. If you don't want to formulate them, say alone, mainly, you can use the CreateIS finder, uh, select your requirements, your uh, and uh, after after you press search, the CreateIS finder uh, formulates a query for you. So let's take a look how a response to such a query look like. First of all, uh, we will put this query uh, in a internet browser to show you uh, how the response looks like. What you do, you simply paste the query in the browser. Okay, we have it. I hope you can see it clearly. Uh, this query should give us the same, the very same results that the finder gave us. So uh, we should have at least five different products listed here. As you can see, we have products from ranging from zero to four, so that is five products. Uh, previously, I have selected the last, the last product. Uh, the <clears throat> numbering of the of the products is uh, based on uh, observation time. So this one was observed uh, the earliest, I think. Uh, yes, uh, because I have, as you can, as you can see here, the last the last product, the very early one from the fifth of July, has a. a approximately 0% cloud cover and the product we have selected here in within the API response has a 0.0171 cloud cover which is roughly zero and this is the product that we shall use for the next uh, part of our presentation but we want to take it a step further. We don't want to use uh, the API manually, copy it within the browser. So let us come back to the CreateIS portal. We are back and now we shall move to the CreateIS Jupyter Notebook uh, hosted by the Jupyter Hub uh, within the environment. It can be selected from, from the tools menu as last position, so-called Jupyter Hub. Uh, you have to sign in, as I mentioned before. So we are signing in with the CreateIS and let's see what happens here. As we are waiting for the login process to uh, to finish, uh, I think it's on my side it has worked or yours as well. Uh, any delays you uh, you witness here are mainly due to uh, heavy load on on a single laptop when you are presenting and uh, and working. So I have prepared for you a uh, basic script for data visualization. This script uh, consists not only of uh, Python, pro 
some Python code, but we will use just a tiny, tiny bit of Unix commands in order to get all information about data we require first. So this script allows you to test the S3 capabilities on the Creo DIAS. The S3 is a uh, access protocol that can be used in, or, in order to download data or parts of the data. Uh, as you remember, just before we have copied, um, I'm waiting for your set to update, we have copied the uh, query from the uh, uh, CreoDIAS Finder interface. We will do one more time. We have uh, put it into the browser to see if it works correctly. We have seen that it, yes, it does. And right now uh, we will utilize the notebook. And if we can use the same query from the notebook level to get uh, uh, the information we need. In this, in this particular query, uh, uh, I have decided I don't need that ad all additional data. So this part of code will only produce uh, the product identifiers I have talked before, and we will choose one uh, later to download parts of it and process it, visualize it actually. Uh, for anyone that is not familiar with uh, Jupyter Notebooks, uh, what you can see on your screens right now is, is a typical Jupyter Notebook. Uh, this one has uh, our CreoDiasis layout with our background, but the functionalities uh, are only extended, not lessened from the from a normal, uh, normal let's say generic Jupyter notebook. Uh, each of the uh, each of the cells contains a part of code. It can be executed separately. It's something we'll be doing for the sake of this presentation, uh, in order to for first to. Uh, first two cells that we'll be using uh, are designed uh, are thought to produce us a working uh, product identifier and then root address to access the data. So let's see if we get the same result at the finder protocol user interface from the uh, browser answer of the Finder API query and from the uh, Jupyter Notebook. Well, quite typically, Quite typically, I think, I think we have we have obtained what we what we need. It's actually, untypically, it's not in a very uh, well behaved behaved manner, but uh, it works. <laughs> so let's uh, let's continue. Let's find the product we. We may desire, as you can see, uh, each. Can you can you actually see it? Okay, uh, I hope I hope you can see it now. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what happened with the uh, webinar application, but let's hope 
it's okay now. Ah. Yes, you can see it, I hope so. So uh, after running the API query through the Could you, we have a question from Maciej Litewski. Could you describe the advantages of using Jupyter for small businesses and startups? Uh, oh yes, uh, I gladly would. But I think that's a question that we will answer after we finish the coding, the coding presentation, if you don't mind. So, I just to uh, query the uh, the Creo Deals Finder about the products we may require. Uh, so next thing that we will do is we shall copy the product identifier of a product we need. It has been copied. And at this moment, I would like to come back to the presentation part because I need to show you the structure of, uh, of Sentinel to L1C products to uh, give you the full view about on what we will be doing right now. Please switch your attention to the uh, slide number five. This is a <clears throat> from the courtesy of, uh, of the United States Geographical Survey. This is a uh, graph that shows uh, you how the product, the Sentinel-2 products are structured. And what we have managed to uh, achieve is to get the product.save identifier. This, the .save format is a specific format to uh, Sentinel-2 products. What we now need uh, in order to get a visualization is to define the so-called granule. Uh, when we talk about the Sentinel-2 L1C products, granule is the same, basically the same thing uh, as tile. Uh, <clears throat> if you don't know what a tile is, tile is a uh, one portion of a grid that uh, uh, the earth has been divided into. Each tile has a specific, uh, let's say, code attached to it, so it can be uh, identified. So what we need to is uh, to get a uh, tile, let's call it address, in order to access the image data to be visualized. Uh, the image data is stored in so-called JP2 format, which is uh, uh, JPEG 2000 compressed format. It's a typical typical operation uh, for this for this data. So uh, I will try to get a pointer. I hope you can see my pointer. The line we are uh, following is from product to product.safe. That's where we are now. We have obtained the product ID, so we have the product.save address. And now we are looking for the granule address because we want to get to the tile folder, then to get to the image data products. The image data products are divided, divided between bands from 1 to 12. Each band has a separate image, and what we will do, we will download those bands and then uh, display them within one picture uh, to visualize a part of land, land we are interested in. In this case, this will be a place from which the Sentinel-6 will be launched in just three months, I think. So as we have, uh, as we have clarified this, let us come back to to the to the Jupyter notebook notebook once again I'm waiting 
for you to see it. Yes, you have. I have. I think you have seen it. Uh, that's the status uh, you should remember from the last time we've been here. And uh, please uh, recall as well uh, the structure of data we want to access. Uh, we have, as I have shown you, a desired. I will highlight it now. I hope you can you can see it. We have a desired uh, product ID for a one specific uh, Sentinel two product, but uh, as you can remember, we need a uh, let's call it granule or a tile ID in order to access the uh, compressed. Uh, uh, J, JP2 data. In order to do so, uh, we'll take advantage of the fact that each of the Jupyter Notebook instances is connected within the cloud with the Earth Observation Data Repository. And I can use a very simple, as you can see, Unix command to get the information about, uh, about the granule, uh, as I know the, the structure of the documents. What I have to do is I have to actually only copy the uh, desired product ID. So I select a product ID, I copy it, and then I shall paste it right here, and it should it should produce yeah something that is uh, that's a this uh, those numbers and letters this is a tile or uh, granule id so let's go to the uh, access through s3 and downloading part so for access and download we will be using a library card called bot of free uh, it's using the S3, uh, S3 protocol to, in order to access the data. Uh, the data is open, so we don't have to, we don't have to put any uh, access or secret keys. Uh, the host of our data is data, data.cloudfarrow.com. And the key path, the key path of the data we want to access uh, is the same as actually the product ID. So we will just copy the product ID. And then we shall paste it instead of this one, which I was uh, checking out before the webinar to see if it's working. Uh, then we have to copy the granule ID and put it in here because this is actually a directory that our uh, code will be looking for uh, for the data. Uh, we end this uh, this key path with uh, slash image data, uh, as you can remember from the date product structure. This is uh, this is the folder that we can where we can find the. Uh, band specific uh, jp2 products uh, afterwards we can decide which bands we want we, we want to display uh, using the script uh, this time we will settle on uh, bands two three and four uh, which should produce uh, normal well, let's true color imagery not normal true color everything's normal uh, and then we have to one, do one more thing. Uh, we have to tell the tell our script how those uh, separate products are named. Uh, but it's quite easy. We just have to choose a tile ID. This thing is a tile ID uh, and the acquisition date. Because, uh, as you may know or may not know, uh, the product product identifiers of Sentinel two products actually of each of any well, 
much, maybe not any majority of Earth observation products, the products identifier, uh, are composed of parts that have a very specific meaning. In this part, uh, I think we can uh, quickly, quickly discuss it, at least some parts of it. This is the platform that was taking the measurement, the Sentinel 2B. Uh, here we have the MSI, the instrument, then L1C is, uh, is the pr processing level of the product. Uh, next part is the date, uh, date of the observation. Here we, here we have, for example, the uh, number of uh, the relative orbit of the platform uh, when the uh, observation was made. Uh, the last part is, I think, uh, the time reference from the uh, ground station. I'm, quite, I'm not quite sure. I think so. Uh, so we have told our script what to look for, where to look for it, uh, which bonds are we are interested in. And right now, we'll just run it and we'll have to wait just a, I think, approximately 30 seconds in order for it to process and download the uh, specif specified uh, products. During this time, I can show you that when we go back to the uh, home folder of your Jupyter Notebook, it should, in a, in a second, produce uh, more more folders that will contain the data we are downloading. Let's see. It's still it's still processing. We don't have anything here, so we have to wait. I will take advantage of this uh, of this moment. Let's go back here. I will take advantage of this moment uh, and answer the question that has been. Uh, said to us by uh, Mr. Maciej Litewski. The question was, could you describe the advantages of using Jupiter for small business and startups? So the, there are many advantages to using Jupiter, uh, not only to uh, small businesses and startups, but uh, let's focus on this. Uh, first of all, uh, this is a free of charge online uh, programming environment with, uh, with with access to a huge Earth Observation Data Repository. Currently, the uh, EO Data Repository of the uh, CRIODIAS is more than 17.5 petabytes of uh, pure EO data. Uh, and such environment does not come, uh, come by often, so it's it's something that should be very attractive to any any startup or and or small business uh, because when you're a startup you don't want to invest in infrastructure you may not be able especially at first may uh, you may not be able to purchase uh, lots of cloud resources so uh, starting your prototyping starting your work uh, exploring your possibilities with uh, with such an online environment uh, offered to you would be very beneficial. Uh, for actually for anyone, for even for bigger uh, entities, uh, Jupyter Notebook that operates within the same cloud environment as the virtual machine and the Earth Observation Data Repository may be very beneficial uh, because they are very cost-effective and quite easy to set up and use uh, uh, user interfaces. So, especially initially uh, during prototyping or uh, during prototyping phase, many, many people use Jupyter Notebooks as uh, uh, user interfaces because they do not demand additional front-end work. They do not demand uh, uh, lots of effort, and it's quite easy to present the results of the work using those. Uh, okay, while I was uh, answering the, the, to this question, uh, it seems that uh, the 
script has managed to download the desired um, products, the desired bands, two, three, and four. Uh, let's come back to the home folder of my Jupyter notebook and check if they are here. I hope that you can see that we have three additional files called bo2, bo3, bo4.jp2. That's what we want to see. That's what that's what we are interested in. So we can go to the very last part of uh, our small and basic presentation. This is uh, the uh, visualization of the uh, Sentinel-2 L1C bands that we have downloaded just before. I will start up the script because it may take some time as well. Uh, I hope not that much. Uh, for this for this part of the script, we use uh, Rasterio library and the matplotlib library. It's quite the script is quite simple actually. Uh, as and the result of the script should be a creation of uh, a Sentinel true color two dot tiff file and Visual, visualization of it right here. So we have managed to go all the way from data discovery uh, using the Creo Dias to uh, API query uh, to data download and then visualization using uh, free services available to all Creo Dias users. It was the very basic. Uh, I hope that in the future uh, in the future webinars, during the future webinars, we will be able to show you more, uh, to give you more tools to you to utilize within your processes. I hope that this presentation uh, will maybe inspire you or uh, lead you to to do more, to to explore more uh, our environment, our cloud. If you have any questions that came up just recently or, or during the presentation, uh, please uh, ask them now. I will try to do my best to give you a satisfactory answer. As there are no uh, other questions, oh, there is one. Uh, hello, Florin. Thank you for your question. Uh, Florin asks: uh, Is there a portfolio of notebooks with more examples available online? S the answer to your question is that we are working on such portfolio to to create. We want to create a let's call it library of notebooks uh, for our users to, to try on, to try out. Uh, it is not yet ready. I hope it will be within, like, let's say, two, three months tops. Uh, but uh, you can find many uh, notebooks, exam uh, notebook examples uh, in, uh, in the internet. Uh, but that's something that that we will be do, that we will be doing uh, as soon as possible to to get you to get you some more uh, uh, some more examples some more inspiration to your work. <laughs> 